I'm a lonely Goomba, stuck between two pipes. Well, guess I keep on gaming for the rest of my life. How does one go from being one of the biggest, most well-known franchises to pretty much dead in the span of two years? Stuff like that doesn't just happen, does it? It takes something big, real big, like the biggest feckin' mistake of your entire life to fuck up that badly. And sure enough, our boy Spyro over here did just that. Spyro, Enter the Dragonfly, a game which is often regarded as the worst Spyro game of all time and responsible for the death of the Spyro franchise. I mean, look at some of these reviews. An almost unplayable train wreck of a game that has no direction, no technical merits and little appeal except a game design house of horrors. Yikes! And the thing is right, the game was intended to have 25 levels. Not bad, not bad. But guess how many of that made it in the final game? Eight. Eight levels. I mean, there's rushing a game out for Christmas and then there's cutting out 70% of the entire feckin' game. But hey now, maybe they're the best eight levels you've ever seen in your life. So, uh, let's not be so hasty and let's check out the game, shall we? Ah, uh, yes, the title screen. It looks pretty good, right? But, uh, hear me out for a moment. Because after a few seconds, the game decides to load a gameplay demo. You know how it is. Show a bit of a game and all that. Problem is, it takes 30 seconds to load. And well, let's just watch the gameplay demo, shall we? Yep, that was it. Five seconds. Five seconds of Spyro flying in the completely wrong direction, and then it just ends. You know, it must be a metaphor for this game or something. Can I also just say, these are some of the most ugly save file icons I think I've ever seen in my life. What the hell am I even looking at? I know I ain't the most handsome chap out there, but dear lord. You know, I think I'm going to have to settle for this farmer guy who looks like he's had a stroke. Perfect. So, the game starts with Hunter suffering from PTSD or some shit. <laughs> It's just a balloon hunter. It's probably been there all day. Tone it down a bit, mate. That's much better. But suddenly, lightning strikes, and Crush, Gub, and Ripto just kind of waltz out of this portal and ask Spyro to join him. You know, you should join me. We would make a great team. He says no, and well, uh... That's fat, I guess. It's never mentioned again. I gotta say though, why is everything so ugly in this game? Spyro looks alright, but well, look at Bianca. I'm not sure what's going on here, but I'm pretty sure they were trying to make her look sexy. She's blushing. She's wearing eyeshadow. She's got a low cup top. She's got weird Play-Doh boots and a cape texture that looks like it's been scaled wrongly and repeated multiple times. Damn, what a babe. And Ripto's animation is a sight to behold. Why even bother lip syncing when you can just stretch out his mouth as far as a model can possibly go? I knew I've been wasting my time animating these videos. This is way easier to do. We also decided to ruin Gorb from Spyro 2 by making him talk like a complete moron. He's gone from this big, unpredictable monster to this. Oh yeah! <laughs> what do we want this time, boss? I gotta say, it's pretty impressive how they can completely ruin a character in just one line. It usually takes at least twice that. But what's Ripto's plan this time? He seems to be doing pretty dapper considering the last time we saw him, he was slowly being burnt to death. And this kids is why when your mum tells you to wear sun lotion, you better listen. Well anyways, his plan is to capture all the dragonflies, but it goes wrong. And they all scatter all over the place, including our good friend Sparks. Then Ripto sort of just uh, scurries off back into the portal. Me, you had like five years to come up with a new plan, and you fucked it right up. So, where could Sparks be? He could literally be anywhere. It's gonna be hard to find him. Oh, uh, uh, never mind, uh, he was just chilling around the corner. Well then. See, uh, I guess he's trying to explain what happened, but for some godforsaken reason, the developers thought it would be a good idea to have no subtitles. So, uh, instead of proper dialogue, we get this. Was that really necessary? Also, what the fuck is with this music that plays for like five seconds and then just jarringly cuts off? Even Sparks is gone! Spyro, Hunter, don't worry. I think I know where to 
start. Follow me. You can't just cut someone off like that. I don't know who that singer is, but he was robbed of his spotlight and he deserves justice. Anyway, uh, let's finally play this masterpiece of a game. And by play, I mean walk forward a few steps till Bianca shows up and tells us about this dragon rune thingy, my bob. Here, take this dragon rune to the dragon spirit over there. Just listen to that lovely sound crackle as she talks. Here. It really reeks of high quality. Her voice also completely changes mid conversation. They're shy and will probably run away from you anytime you come near them. Tap your L button to switch back and forth between fire and bubble breath. I mean, come on, you can't just change someone's voice halfway through a conversation and expect nobody to notice. You know, uh, this is the first and last time Bianca shows up in the actual game, you know. Although, if you exit a stage, you might see her for a split second. Wanna see if you can spot her? Well, uh, here we go! Did you see her? Well, if you did, make sure you leave a comment below and smash that like button. Did I, uh, did I do it right this time? Anyways, uh, now we finally get to play this game, for reals this time. Well, uh, for another few seconds, cause this bugger stops us and gives us bubble breath. And then a few more steps later, Spark stops us and tells us about gems. And then sheep, and then how to safely perform autoerotic asphyxiation. And then how to break these baskets. There's hand holding. I remember is literally explaining every single aspect of the game in painful detail. I mean, it takes like five minutes to explain how this challenge gate works. All you gotta do is walk through it. It didn't need an essay sparks. Just gotta walk through it to activate it and that's it. Well, when it actually decides to work because uh, it didn't work. You had one job challenge gate and you fucked it up. Point is here too, you know, and it just explains how to jump and glide and all that. And then he jumps so high, he literally never comes back. Yep. Uh, He's gone, all right. He's definitely gone. I have to go now. My planet needs me. But right, let's get to the first level, shall we? Red Dragonfly Dojo. You enter this level by stepping on this magic stone while Spiral clips through the floor and barely follows it correctly. Heck, sometimes it just misses the platform entirely. Guess he just wasn't feeling it today. Don't blame your mate. So, the level, and I know it's hard to see on the YouTube videos, but the frame rate sucks. I'm not gonna keep bringing it up, but it's fucking shit. Sometimes you breathe fire and it'll slow down to like 15 frames per second. There's just too many sparkly things. You got sparks, you got dragonflies, you got fog effects, and even the gems sparkle and have fully modeled 3D numbers pop out. It's just too much for the game to handle. Talking about gems, half the time we don't even display the right number. The gold gem shows a zero, and then a 10, and sometimes it's a bleeding 25. Make up your goddamn mind. I don't have time for your indecisiveness. And after a short while, we run into our old friend's money bags, who like usual, ask for gems so we can progress through the level. Problem is, this is the only time he shows up in the entire game. You pay him a pitiful amount of gems, he raises the bridge and he never shows up again, effectively making any gems from this point onwards completely pointless. The game also introduces us to these challenge portal gates, which look very similar to the gates which also exit the levels. Seriously now, what part of this conveys this is a challenge? Whilst this one's an exit to the level. I'd say there's a 50-50 chance you're gonna accidentally leave the level at least once by going in the wrong game. Guaranteed this has happened to at least one of you watching right now. You know who you are. So, uh, the first challenge is a speedway, similar to the original games, and uh, all things considered, it ain't that bad. Other than the fact you can seemingly fly right through these rocks with very little effort. But, uh, pfft, proper collision detection is overrated anyway. So, I finish the challenge, and the spire over here forgets how to walk and he forgets how to breathe fire for a brief moment. And the enemies just sort of uh, vanish out of existence. Just have a look. That ain't right, I told you. The second challenge is a military themed tank challenge, complete with its own stereotypical army voice guy. Now I've got a prize for you if you can destroy all the dummy tanks. One minute, you got some dragon meditating, the next minute, you got this. It feels a bit lazy, you know, but uh, what can you expect from a game in which the sky will sometimes just disappear? Upon completing the level, we get lightning breath, which is needed to open this gate, because it's, uh, 
has a lightning symbol on it. Although, being Spyro Enter the Dragonfly, you can just glitch through this gate if you don't really feel like doing that. I guess programming a solid wall was a little bit too much effort. And look, there's another one of those challenge gates here, and of course Sparks explains it again. And when I finally start the challenge, Sparks freaking stops me to explain how to climb. Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? Second time is ticking away, and I'm stuck here listening to Sparks tell me his life story. Thanks a lot, you dick. It's around this point we're introduced to possibly the worst representation of a human I've ever seen in my life. His features somewhat resemble a human, he talks a bit like a human, but I don't care what it's supposed to be, that ain't human. I mean, just look at that weird line going down the middle of his face. It freaks me out, man. So, the theme for this level is a farm which has been took over by aliens, and it's up to us to rescue the cows. We're also introduced to vases, so of course, Sparks explains them too. These vases can only be destroyed by charging into them, only like most things in this game, it doesn't work quite right. Half the time, the correct sound effect won't even play. And it's not even uncommon either, it happens all the time. And sometimes, you'll just be walking around and you'll just hear or see a smashing vase in the background for no reason. And if you do decide to use fire on them, the game just slows down to a crawl and you sort of just clip through them all glitchy. Basically, they fucked up literally everything about these vases. They do look pretty nice though, right, don't they? Did a good job there. You know, you probably noticed by now, but these levels are huge and empty. They just scatter these gems all over the place, so you spend forever going back and forth just to pad the game out. The entire level is basically this, with the same old barns repeated over and over again. It makes catching these dragonflies really boring. But you know, Bianca said these dragonflies were shy and would try to run away, but it don't sound like that to me. The little bastard's taunting me. Fine then, I'll just leave you to die then, shall I? Also, uh, Spyro forgot how to walk again, and I thought my animation was lazy, Jesus. Even the cameraman's had enough of this shit. So, uh, eventually we get to the end of the level and rescue the cows by lighting this box of explosives right next to them, causing them to explode, and the doors swing open and then just, uh, vanish for no reason, and then the cows defy gravity and start levitating off the ground. What a way to end the level. The next stage is a beach stage. And you know what? It ain't that bad. And look, it even has those ticky monsters from Spyro too. Only this time, uh, this tends to happen. Yeah, but uh, that ain't the only thing we took from Spyro too. Aha! Did you hear that? It's the unmistakable sound of the professor, a much beloved Spyro character. Aha! Well, uh, that's what I thought, but no. It's just this stupid big. They were so lazy, they couldn't even be bothered to record new lines. So one minute, it sounds like a nerdy professor. Aha! And the next, it sounds like this. Thank you so much, Spyro. I just couldn't have handled being eaten for dinner. I mean, come on. You can't just change someone's voice halfway through a conversation and expect no one to notice. This level also introduces us to some good old platforming. I mean, how can you mess up platforming? Not even enter the dragonfly can screw this one up. Oh, uh, well that was weird, but maybe it was just a one-off, you know. Uh, let's try again. Oh, well, you did it, Spyro. You somehow managed to fuck up basic platforming. I hope you're proud of yourself. You know, uh, something I'm starting to notice is how weird some of these dragonfly names are. You got Krishnamurti. Scuttlebutt, Yo Jimo, and Tashi Station. <laughs> hey, it's Tashi Station! Wait, uh, is that a reference to Toshi Station for that one single line in Star Wars? But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. Yeah, I, I don't really get it either. Well, uh, on to the next stage. Cloud 9, or as I like to call it, copy and paste 9 times. I'm telling you, the developers went a bit nuts here, they keep reusing the same small structure over and over. It's damn right relentless. Look at this area, and then this area, and then this area, and then this area, and then this area. It just keeps going man, it's always the same. They even reuse it in the bleeding speedway challenge, Jesus Christ. There's also a challenge in which you have to gun down flying beds in a World War II spitfire. First a tank in a dojo, and now there's a bloody cute teddy bear wanting us to gun down ships in a bleeding spitfire. I can see why this level's themed around dreams now. I'm having a freaking fever dream over here, and I can't wake up. Look, 
Not only is the level ridiculously huge, but developers thought it'd be fun to put gems in ridiculous areas. Now, this wouldn't be a problem, but the gems don't even show up to you right in front of them. It has the worst pop-up I've ever seen. Uh, just look here, do, do you see any gems? Nah, of course you don't, but jump off this ledge here, fly all the way around and whammo, the gems just magically pop in from nothing. Don't fly right though, or you'll likely hit an invisible wall and die. I mean, come on. Even Spyro 1 got this right, no matter how far away you were, you could see the gems sparkle. And that was on the PlayStation 1. Well, uh, enough of that. Let's move on to the next level, Monkey Monastery, the obligatory ice level. And of course, the level transition is once again atrocious. They didn't even try. This level also brings back our old friend, a glitchy floating platforms. Yeah, yes, it's good to see you again. And look, another old friend. It's Bartholomew from Spyro 3. But uh, from the looks of things, I'd say he's developed a minor crack addiction since then. He was pretty cute before, but now, uh, well, uh, let's just say I'm getting Farmer Dill vibes. <laughs> so Bart over here wants us to rescue these frozen yetis. And uh, I want you to take a moment to guess what they sound like. Just make a mental note of that voice and remember it, okay? Are you ready? Oh, I like the cold. But I don't like it that much. Yep, uh, I'm pretty sure you wasn't expecting a World War II British military general. And they all sound like this. I feel like an ice lolly! Very strange. I guess you can't judge a book by its cover, eh? Or in this case, uh, a yeti by its terrifying nightmare inducing face. Now, one of the challenges in this level involves us gunning down military factories with a Spitfire. Again! Now, you might be thinking, maybe the yetis tie into this mission so it makes a bit of sense. But no. It's a baby dragon this time. A baby dragon is telling you to destroy turret factories with a Spitfire plane. Man, kids really are growing up too fast these days. But at this point, we're already well past halfway through the game. But that won't stop this random cutscene from playing. That in itself is an issue. But the problem is, the cutscene is clearly, and I mean clearly, intended to be played at the start of the game. I swear they just sliced off part of the intro and played it randomly after this level to trick people into thinking the game has a story. Ripto basically just explains the premise of the game and then he says he's going to send out his Riptops to stop Spyro. Something that's already happened and didn't need explaining. Crush is talking now too for some reason. I think the dragonflies were scattered all over. Not that it matters, because Rifto just kind of kills them and then they never show up in the entire game. Why even have them in the game in the first place? They only have one line each, it wasn't even worth the trouble. Ah oh, well, you know it was all worth it just to see this again. <laughs> ah yes. Classic. Next stage then, and it's Honey Marsh, a world populated by inbred crocodiles, complete with some lovely sound crackling. Well, that should do it, Spyro. Although I gotta say, at least Spyro actually stands on the platform this time. Well, close enough. Who knows? Maybe next time they'll nail it. There's also one of those thieves in this level. You know the ones. These bastards. Well, they look a bit different, but you still have to chase them down. Well, kinda. These bastards are slow. I literally wasn't even trying to kill them this time. Pathetic. I think this wicker basket over here put up more of a challenge. It refuses to break. It must be surviving on sheer willpower alone. And then for no reason whatsoever, there's just a random exploding vase. Remarkable. So after all that, this croc guy over here wants us to kill these evil bees by swallowing some rocks and spitting them back at them. Problem is, yeah, it doesn't work that well. After a few rocks, Spyro decides he's had enough and refuses to eat anymore. I can't really blame him because uh, they don't really look like rocks, do they? I'm like 50% sure those are not rocks. Like 90% sure they're not rocks. I'm like 99% sure he's eating shit. And judging by his face, he knows it too. You know that tank returns in this level too. The game only really has 7 levels and you're already recycling content. And I gotta say, this is some of the worst collision detection I've ever experienced. I'm trying to shoot these bees, but the missiles keep exploding for no reason. It turns out, they're hitting that flower and exploding. You know, that flower, which is clearly not even close to hitting. And when you do eventually win, the croc is a condescending ass. You know, for fun, you do know what fun is, don't you, Spiro? It's like the game knows it's shit, and it's rubbing it in my face. And when we reach the end of the level, this guy gives us a dragonfly, but then he slags him off. Besides, they got them bug eyes too. Mm, gives me the creeps. 
This triggers our buddy Spark so much that his voice completely changes and he can speak English now. Hi! What the hell was that? Hi! I mean, come on, you can't just change someone's voice halfway through a conversation and... You know what? Forget it. So, uh, upon leaving this level, for no reason whatsoever, without any indication, I noticed the portal to Ripto is now open. The game never actually gives you a target to work towards. I guess you'll just have to stumble upon this hole in the ground by complete accident. You know, there's no build up or cutscene for this. It it's just now open, and I can fight the final boss. But there's still two levels left, so let's quickly have a look at those first, shall we? I'm sure Ripto can wait. Right, so the next level is Thief's Den, a magical world full of those annoying buggies from the past games. I guess this is where they all ended up. Oh yeah, this is the only level in the entire game you have to use the wing shield. By pressing L and R, you can form a shield and reflect shots back at these buggies. Just like this. Just like this. Uh, just like... This. Ah, for fuck's sake. This is way more annoying than it should ever be. And you have to do this 10 times. It's fun, right? And these Axis man, they look pretty cool, but dear lord, they did not program this properly at all. The collision is ridiculous. If you dive head first into one, you'll likely just glitch through them and you'll be fine. But if you do dodge them, you'll probably go careening off to the side despite clearly not hitting them. And then there's these magic whirlwinds. You know the ones. They take you up and away to new areas. Just jump in them and enjoy the ride. Only in this game, they've gone rogue too and they're out to kill you. You put all your trust in these things, expecting to be fine, but nope. The bugger sent me right into a wall and killed me. A hard life lesson. Don't trust anyone, especially magic floating whirlwinds. Oh yeah, and when I talked to this guy, Spyro got stuck in an infinite loop. It just keeps walking into this wall. Some say he's still walking into this wall to this very day. Most people are wrong because I, I clearly finished the game. But still. And now, for the final level, Jurassic Jungle. A cross between Jurassic Park and the Terminator. It's at this point I noticed that Spyro starts repeating dialogue. Cool! Now it's time to go kick some Riptock butt! Cool! Now it's time to go kick some Riptock butt! I guess after talking to these annoying NPCs all day, I'd start repeating myself too. But that ain't too bad considering sometimes Spyro reads the wrong line entirely. Hey, it's Karen! I think Spyro's just tired at this point. Tired of life. But hang in there, buddy. We're in the home stretch. Just got this one challenge left to do. A climbing challenge. Well, technically it's climbing, but there's a good chance you'll be floating 10 feet in the air. And sometimes Spyro would just not move where you want him to. And sometimes this happens. I swear I'm not doing this on purpose. And if you do happen to get hit, well, good luck getting out of this death loop. This tower has no pity, no sympathy. It's just a soulless killing machine. Just like uh, someone else I know. <clears throat> Mario, <clears throat> 10,000 Goombas dead. <clears throat> Boycott Mario. <clears throat> and once again, upon winning this terrible challenge, the NPC decides to be a condescending prick again. Uh, just for fun. You do know what fun is, don't you, Spyro? Yes, for fuck's sake, I know what fun is. And this isn't it. Nah, fuck you off. So, uh, that's it. That's the entire game, pretty much. Upon getting every single gem and every single dragonfly, we can fight the true final boss. They didn't even bother to give him lip sync in this time. It was probably for the best. He then says Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus. And then runs around with an ice shield. You chase him down, free fire a few times. This happens. And then he dies. Lovely. But wait, it's not over. He says Hocus Pocus. Again. Hocus Pocus. And then gets bigger. He then says Hocus Pocus yet again. Hocus Pocus. Just in case you didn't hear it the first three times. And left the beat in this form by doing the exact same thing as the first time. It's time for the third and final form. And you guessed it. He says Hocus Pocus again. Hocus Pocus. And turns into this ungodly beast. Although, uh, sometimes it just stands there doing nothing. Really, it's the ultimate plan. Just stand there doing nothing. You can't lose, and eventually Spyro will either give up or starve to death. Yeah, I can't hand it to Ripto. He really thought this one through. No weak points, no openings. Just stand there. Genius. Anyways, uh, after attempting again, he actually moves this time, and we beat him. And then he just sort of stands there doing nothing for an extended period of time. 
you were uh, you gotta say something old chap oh there we go he has a little rant jumps in the portal and that's basically it Sparks talks again with no subtitles, Spyro winks at the screen, and then the game ends. And we're greeted with this dragonfly having a seizure as the credits roll. But would you have the game end any other way? It seems suitable to end it with a graphical glitch, don't you think? And that's it, Spyro enter the dragonfly. Is it as bad as some people say? Yes. Yes it is. And if you do decide to play the game, do yourself a favour. Glitch through this gate like this, swim through this hole till you're out of bounds, swim through the air and back into the final boss portal and finish the game in 5 minutes. Or if that's too much trouble, you can literally just clip through the floor as soon as the game starts. You're welcome. And the patron of the week is Lewis. You know, it's nice to read out a nice and easy username this time. Lewis. More people should have a username like this. Usually it'd be something like Lewis Dragon Eyes 2837 or some shit. 